and welcome to a brand new episode of the podcast entitled Couch Potatoes Unite! Exclamation point. This is a podcast based on a blog of the same name because we don't want you to sing What's That Podcast? We just want you to know it's Couch Potatoes Unite! My name is Kylie and I love TV. If you feel the same, keep listening and or checking out the blog at couchpotatoesunite.wordpress.com as you're bound to find some common ground or something you like. For at Couch Potatoes Unite, we're all about the wonders and the unique long-form storytelling of the small screen. CPU! Exclamation point is heating up big time. The 2015-2016 TV season has come to a close, so we hope you've kept score on your favorite shows. We also hope you've been following releases of brand new episodes of the podcast on Wednesdays, as well as new blog entries on some Tuesdays, and as always, we have several more new episodes on the way. Because the panelists and I live lives behind our podcast, the episodes are still being published once per week in many seasons, kind of like The Walking Dead. So subscribe to the blog or the podcast via iTunes or Stitcher Radio to stay on top of brand new episodes. Episodes already published discuss a variety of shows, including but not limited to Doctor Who, Downton Abbey, How to Get Away with Murder, Broadchurch, Marvel's Daredevil and Jessica Jones, Once Upon a Time, and The X-Files, from its inception through its revival, we've taken a look back at True Blood, Ally McBeal, Futurama, and Desperate Housewives, and more episodes are in the works, including revisits for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., The Vampire Diaries, Gotham, Game of Thrones, Orange is the New Black, and Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, Plus, our DC Television Universe panel will shortly be covering Arrow Seasons 3 and 4 and The Flash Seasons 1 and 2. We're also starting up new panels to discuss shows including Supernatural and American Horror Story, and we'll be taking one of our looks back at the popular, critically acclaimed HBO drama Six Feet Under. What's more, CPU is going live! In August and September, we will be live-streaming two of our podcast panels in front of a live studio audience. Stay tuned for the details on that. In the meantime, if you don't hear your show in this podcast format, check out the blog. Fellow panelists and I still write reviews, and we're always seeking new panelists, so if you have any interest in joining the discussion, say hello. We have a Facebook page, a Twitter, follow us at CPU Podcasts, and an email address at CouchPotatoesUnitePodcast at gmail.com. Now we also have Instagram at CouchPotatoesUnite and a Pinterest at CPU Podcast. Of course, you can always subscribe to the blog, our YouTube channel, our iTunes channel, or our Stitcher Radio channel and leave comments and reviews. A thumbs up on YouTube or a few handy words on iTunes would help us spread the word, so please consider taking a few seconds to do it. We would truly appreciate it. Today we're around the water cooler and reflecting upon seasons four and five of quirky sitcom New Girl, which most recently aired from January through May of 2016. Season four aired from September 16, 2014 to May 5, 2015, and season five aired from January 5, 2016 to May 10, 2016. New Girl is an American sitcom that premiered on Fox on September 20, 2011. Developed by Elizabeth Merriweather, the series revolves around an offbeat teacher named Jess, played by Zoe Deschanel, who moves into an L.A. loft with three men, Nick, played by Jake Johnson, Schmidt, played by Max Greenfield, and Winston, played by Lamorne Morris. Jess's best friend, Cece, played by Hannah Simone, and on-again, off-again loft mate coach, played by Damon Wayans Jr., also appear regularly. The show combines comedy and drama elements as the characters, who are in their early 30s, deal with maturing relationships and career choices. Jess is a bubbly young woman who teaches at a Los Angeles middle school. She comes home to find her boyfriend with another woman, leaves him immediately, and looks for somewhere else to live. She answers an ad for a new roommate on Craigslist and moves in with three young men, Nick Schmidt and Coach. After the pilot episode, Winston, who had previously lived in the apartment with Nick and Schmidt, replaced his coach. Cece, Jessica's childhood best friend and a successful fashion model, also appear in various episodes in the storyline. Coach returns to the loft in season three, but leaves again after season four. A small but robust panel of familiar CPU participants, New Girl fans, and true Americans volunteered to gather around the water cooler and discuss the state of the sitcom formerly known as a dorkable to see how it's holding up. Is it still fresh and funny, or has it wilted on the vine a bit with the antics and on-and-off-again dynamics of the loft? 
I can assure you that the panel is standing on the furniture, ready and waiting the next turn and next drink in true American. So as always, it should be noted that all of our panelists have viewed the entire series through Season 5 and may discuss sensitive plot points, which can still exist in a situation comedy, albeit as more of a suggestion of a story than an actual story. For those of you who haven't watched any of New Girl and plan to catch up at some point and or to be surprised by the laughs, listen at your own risk as there are going to be major sitcom spoilers. At this time, I'd like to introduce our panel. If you follow our podcast, you should know the drill. I'm going to ask each panelist how they came to watch New Girl, what made them start watching, how did they find out about it, what kept them watching. P.S. Tell us your first name. And then how would you rate your interest in the show? This is the CPU standard character question, though it changes with each show we do. So I'm going to read this breakdown. It's pretty short because there's only six characters. When you watch New Girl or watching New Girl, do you love this show? So much so you like to randomly blurt out song lyrics about it, knit or craft tchotchkes pertaining to it, or generally encourage it to be its best, like Jessica Day. Do you enjoy this show almost as much as you enjoy your cat named Ferguson, like Winston Bishop? Do you think this show is aight, but you'd rather be kicking it with the ladies, like Ernest Coach Tagliabu? Do you watch this show because your best friend watches it and loves it, and or you might have an incurable thing for Schmidt, like Cece Perique? Do you tolerate this show, but you find it sloppy and in need of a serious makeover? You're also kind of a douchebag, like we don't know his first name, Schmidt. Or do you hate this show, like you hate life, youth, and other random things, because you're a grumpy old man crammed into a grumpy young man's body, but... You're always up for a game of true American, like Nick Miller. Who would like to start? I'll go first. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kristen. Hey, um, it's Kristen. It's me again. <laughs> so I guess what made me start watching it, I saw the ads for it when it was first premiering way back in season one on Fox. I thought it looked pretty interesting. I am a Zoe Deschanel fangirl myself, so of course I was going to watch it. I thought it was refreshing. It was, Kylie has kind of talked about in our off podcast discussions it's like a our millennial version of friends which i was also a big fan of but yeah i thought it was cute and yeah so i just i just kind of kept on watching i haven't stopped yet as far as my interest in this show it's not one of my top shows anymore it's kind of been demoted to being a dvr favorite so i don't necessarily have to watch it right away i'll usually bank a couple episodes up and then watch them you know three or four at a time so i'm going to say I enjoy it, but not as much as I enjoy my cat named Ferguson, like Winston, even though I'm allergic to cats and I don't have any. And, but yeah, I, and I also, I think the show's all right, like Coach. And I'm going to go one more, and I'm going to say I tolerate it, but it is a little sloppy. Um, especially when Zoe was on her maternity leave this past season, it did get a little sloppy. So I'm, I'm the three, I'm the boys. Kristen, you're almost bad as my sister with these combination ones. <laughs> Sorry. So Winston, Coach, and Schmidt for the win. All right. Well, welcome back, Kristen. Loyal listeners have probably heard Kristen's voice once or twice. And uh, hi, I'm Kelsey. Hi, Kelsey. Hi. <laughs> Let's see. I pretty much the same as Kristen. I saw the previews on Fox, and I love Zoe, and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna watch that. <laughs> and, yeah, haven't stopped watching. I love it. It's hilarious. I actually never did catch that it's kind of like Friends, so that was like a new new revelation. Alright, <laughs> another one. I got her with another one. I don't know if I quite accept it, but I... I we can discuss. We yeah, can discuss. for sure. For sure. <laughs> How would I rate my interest? I mean, I do love this show, but I don't really craft very much. <laughs> this I, is or or I yeah I randomly probably I probably blurted out songs. Yes, definitely the theme song, like not while I'm watching the show, just okay. randomly in my house. So I'm gonna go with with Jess, I think. Although I do like the coach one. I was going to pick coach, except that I think this show is more than I. <laughs> For the record, that is how Kylie has written it. Yes. yes. Our question. Yeah. That's how he talks. Instead of, like, kicking it out with the ladies, like, my friends. Because, like, I, I do mostly watch it on Hulu right now. I don't really watch it live anymore. Okay. But that's mostly how I watch all my TV is on Hulu. So it's not necessarily a reflection of the show. 
Okay. So yeah. All right. So you you're Jess. I I'm Jess. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, welcome back, Kelsey. Thank you. If you've listened to our Vampire Diaries podcast, that's where she is from, and you'll probably hear her voice again in some other panels. As for me, as of course, my name is Kylie. I'm moderating today, as I moderate a lot of these, and I started watching New Girl. I saw the ads for it, but I wasn't initially, like, sold on it. I thought, I actually thought from the get or from the jump that this was a reimagined friend, so I was a little turned off by it. I do like Zoe, but not fangirly, I guess, like Kristen or Kelsey. <laughs> <laughs> However, the buzz after the first season was so was so hype about it, and people were talking about it so much, and less about Zoe and more about the supporting characters that I felt the need once it hit Netflix to kind of catch up with it. Watched the first season and loved it. Watched... I think I'm, I don't remember if I tuned in the second season or the third season, but it was one of those two seasons. Watched it all on Netflix, caught up, and loved it. I don't think I love it quite anymore. Not quite to the same level. I still think it's funny. It makes me laugh, but I would not pick a combination. We'll talk about who we think we are in real life, but as far as the interest scale, I definitely think I'm Winston. I do have a cat. Her name is not Ferguson, <laughs> but I do enjoy the show almost as much as I enjoy my cat, so I think that's an appropriate appropriate choice for me. So welcome, ladies. Welcome to the New Girl panel. We're going to talk about two seasons today, seasons four and seasons five, and because it's a sitcom, there's not going to be a ton of story points to focus on. It's really going to be a lot about the situations, but there were some threads that ran through the season, and we'll get to those in a second. But what I want to ask you, first of all, we've alluded to the Friends comparison. I'll get to that in a minute. What I wanted to ask the panel is, I've asked you to rate your interest. Now I want you to think about who you are compared to these characters in real life. If you were, and you can only pick one, Kristen... <laughs> my next question. <laughs> if you well, that's okay. You can pick a combination because I really see myself as a combination. This is schizophrenic. Combination. What if I promise to hold it at two? Is that okay? Hold it to two. Okay. Because really, how multi personality can you get? <laughs> so what I'd like you to do is think about who you are in real life. Give a flavor of your of you comparing yourself to one of the loft mates and go. Okay, I guess I'll go first. Um, I guess if I have to stick to two, yes, Kristen. which is very hard to do right now, I would say, gosh, I'm I can be really weird, so I'm gonna I'm I'm probably pretty close to Jess. I can be a little little crazy, and but I also have the level headedness of Cece. So if Jess and Cece had a love child, you'd probably get me for those reasons. I'm a little crazy, but I'm also level headed. That. That seems good. I accept that. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm glad. I'm like, I like, like am I on track here? Like, we are like for sure. three I Geminis discussing this. Oh, discussing that's this. true. So yeah. we're all like multiple personalities. Yeah. Oh, that's true. I just realized. Um, two twins. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> two. That's why we all get two. That's yes. all we get two. <laughs> I don't that's need two. <laughs> you don't need two? I don't think so. <laughs> she probably doesn't need two. I think I know what she's going to I know. I think I know. So I, what are you going to say? Don't. I'm just... Of course you are. Yeah. No, no surprise there, listeners. No surprise. She doesn't make crafts, but... <laughs> I try... I, I do, but I just don't have any spare time, so yep. I don't. Okay. But I <laughs> sing random things. She and does. That is... Yeah. That's valid. Have weird ways of cheering up my friends. So... That's yeah. like, <laughs> feel, Yeah, that, that's spot on. I feel strongly about it. Fair enough. You go. Me? Okay. I always lovingly say that I'm half Jess, half Nick. <laughs> yes. Yep. 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 The, the sort of weirdness that Kristen alluded to, I think I have that in spades. I also think I have her fashion sense a lot of times. You do love mod cloth. I do love mod cloth. <laughs> most of the costumes they get for Jessica Day are from mod cloth. Oh, there you go. So. I actually have one of the same dresses that she wore on the show oh, a few ago, and it's from mod cloth. Well, there so, you go. There we go. Mm-hmm. If I could buy. All of my wardrobe from Mod Cloth, I totally would. Yes. I only They should the give us money now. Yeah. <laughs> no. uh, New girl sponsor sponsored us. by Mod Cloth. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> but I, I honestly also really see myself as Nick 
for a lot of reasons. Truth. Yes. Grumpy, sarcastic, <clears throat> piping off with opinions <laughs> kind of person. Hey, I'm running a podcast. What do you want? Mm-hmm. And a little sloppy. I mean, I'll admit it. I'm a little sloppy, too. <laughs> so I already relate to both of them, which is kind of a schizophrenic choice. But then, as Kelsey pointed out, Gemini. So it all makes sense, really, in the end. <laughs> <laughs> so this should be an interesting... We've got a lot of Jesses in the room, but we've also got some schizo things going on over here. Well, I could, say I, I could say I'm Winston in CC, if that would make things a little easier. <laughs> was, that was, was he your third He choice? was my third. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't have any bird shirts. I will say that. <laughs> I mean, I, I Winston don't is own, also a little crazy. He's also so a little crazy. He's, he's awkward crazy. Yeah. yeah. I can be a little awkward, though. I don't know. I see CC. Uh, yeah. And I, 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 I can see the CC. I, okay. Yeah. I'll stick with my original answer then. Yeah. <laughs> I know some Winstons in life. I don't think you're a Winston. Okay. I know some Schmitz in real life. I, I think we all, we all know some Schmitz, Schmitz in real life. Yes. Who? <laughs> And they float on either side of the sexuality line. But we'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe we won't. We don't want to diss anyone. So now let's let's transition. So yes, I did talk with Kristen pre-podcast at one point about how I sort of saw a new girl. Not completely. It's not a mirror, not a complete rehashing of Friends. But there just happens to be six characters that come in and out of their lives. And there are some pretty stark parallels that you can draw, I think, between the Friends characters and the New Girl characters. So, Kelsey, you said, I don't know if I'm sold. What What do you think? Oh, man. <laughs> on the spot. To me, right on the spot. Yeah. I'm looking for that. I'm looking for your, your question that you sent me that said exactly who everybody was. Question number four. Yeah. Thank I think, you. So I'll re- for the listener, I sort of saw Jess as Phoebe because, you know, Valley. I sort of see Nick as Chandler. Schmidt is Monica because he's got the hyper OCD and the former fat kid thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, Winston yeah. is Ross because they're both kind of awkward with the ladies and nerdy in their own way. Coach is Joey, but smarter. I don't think anybody could really equate the two of them per se, but they are kind of slutty in a man way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm, and then yeah. Cece is clearly Rachel because, okay. you know. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So, like, maybe I'm a combination of Jess and Schmidt because I always kind of saw myself as Monica because I'm kind of a control yeah. freak. My mom told me that I was a Monica. But I feel like Jess is kind of a control freak sometimes, too. She can be. She can and be, but I don't feel like I'm the same way as Schmidt. No. Schmidt gets weird yeah. about like having things. clean and like yeah. clean things and proper and kitchen utensils. <laughs> there. Okay, that's, there. Okay, then if that's the case, then I'm definitely more of a Schmidt than I am. <laughs> <laughs> so then I'm a Schmidt and a CC. <laughs> well, that works. So you're a Schmidt and CC's baby. I could be. I could be with my favorite Aunt Jess. Yeah. I'll, yeah. Go, I'll go with that too. <laughs> so hard. Yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of what I thought. Okay. No, I, I agree with it. I mean, I definitely see Schmidt as Monica, hands down. Mm-hmm. You know, for all the reasons that you said. I mean, yeah, you I, could, I totally forgot about you, the formal, former fat kid. Yeah, thing. but if that's, you were to put Schmidt and Monica in a room together, they would probably be either best friends or mortal or enemies because they're exactly the same. Yeah. yeah. That's true. And they're, I mean, obviously, they're, they're again, not exact carbon copies. They all have unique things. Mm-hmm. They're a different generation. You know, Friends is very clearly Gen X. This is very clearly Millennial or Gen Y or however you want to mm-hmm. categorize it. But I just saw the parallels, and I think it's partially the formulaic thing, but it has a different basis or situation that mm-hmm. it's working off of. I think, <laughs> I would say, I still like Friends a little bit better. Yeah, I do too. I just, I think the, I've recently rewatched the whole series mm-hmm. of Friends, and I feel like it has a little more staying power than New Girl does, but maybe it is because they're millennials and they're very in the moment, they're on trend, there's, it's, I don't know, Friends just feels a little more classic. But, ask me again in ten years... And maybe New Girl will still be just as funny. I actually read an article about this very recently, sort of comparing the two shows and some other similar friend circle kind of sitcoms, because they've had a lot of them in recent years, none of them quite as successful as Friends or New Girl. One of the things that they said about Friends versus New Girl is that in Friends, over the ten seasons, the characters clearly evolved 
past their initial starting points. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. New girl, that's not always been the case. Mm -hmm. In fact, really, arguably, the only character that has evolved in any real way is Winston. All the others have made some forward motion in seasons four and five, but it took them until that point to get there. That's true. Yeah. But, I mean, how quickly did the Friends characters really evolve? I'm trying to think. I some mean, are faster I than others. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. I mean, they had ten seasons, so yeah. maybe if New Girl has ten seasons, we will yeah. be able to compare Probably Joey never evolved. <laughs> <laughs> he, he really didn't. No. Uh, no he, he really didn't. didn't. He no, but I mean, Joey. I think Phoebe made the biggest leap forward in Friends, and so... I think Chandler did. Yeah. Because Chandler too. started off being the neurotic, everything is crazy, because my mom is a romance novelist that cheated on my dad, who was gay, who <laughs> cheated on her, yeah. you know. His dad I, is now transgender, yeah. Yeah, all that yeah. stuff. And he had really a hard time committing to a relationship until he realized he had feelings for Monica. So. That's true. Mm-hmm. But that's for a Friends podcast. I can't wait to <laughs> <Yes>. do that. Because <laughs> there will be one. Yeah. Or maybe a yeah. series. I don't know. Yeah. So let's talk about New Girl. <laughs> it's my fault. I raised the question. Let's talk about season four. I know that's going back a little bit. But it, it has been since season three. Since Couch Potatoes United covered it in any kind of format. Which was blog format. Season four was the post-Nick and Jess breakup season. So they... Got together at the end of season two, they were together during season three, then they imploded by the end of season three, and it was life in the loft after their awkward breakup. What did we think about that season? It was awkward. I mean, I don't know, I really liked Nick and Jess together, and when they broke up in season four, it kind of felt like something was missing. I felt, I mean, they, it's kind of the, going back to Friends, it's very much Ross and Rachel, they were building up to it. And, you know, it was great while it lasted, and then, oh, here we go, now they're, not, now they're not together anymore, but they're still living together, and I don't know, it was, it felt like season four was just missing something. I don't know, <laughs> I, I always, like, I'm in, I'm in this, like, eternal, like, state of mind where I'm like, why does there always have to be romantic? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. when you introduce a girl and several guys, why does she always have to fall for one of them? So while I appreciated the chemistry they had together, I also was like, oh good, now we can move past that and just be explore their friendships and probably that won't stay that way because I feel like a lot of people agree with Kristen. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, yay! And yeah, I mean, there was some awkwardness, but I feel like it was intentional awkwardness because... Yeah. I mean, that's awkward when you break up with somebody and then you decide to keep living with them. And with three other roommates. Yeah. And Yeah, and you're trying to stay just friends. I I feel like it was an appropriate level of awkwardness. I didn't feel like all of a sudden I was like, oh, well, now I don't want to watch this anymore or mm-hmm. anything like yeah. that. And there were definitely some hilarious episodes, so... That's true. That's... I'm sort of in the middle between the two of you. I feel like, on the one hand, I, I agree with Kelsey that... It doesn't always have to be a romantic pairing in a sitcom situation. And that's also what made me compare it to Friends because there's this on-again, off-again dynamic with this inner circle. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I felt the way they were broken up was a little bit forced. So that felt a little bit too contrived. However, it did spring off into some very funny situations not the least of which includes, like, for example, Nick pretending to be gay. That when was a hilarious. Yeah. He just brings a boy. <laughs> <laughs> just so they won't, you know, he doesn't threaten the new boy, for example. Yeah. Or Nick dating Tron's granddaughter. Yeah. Be- that was actually kind of perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I kind of liked that. But he was also one of my favorite side characters, too. Mm-hmm. Yes. I, I really liked Nick's relationship with him and just, you know... Nick spilling his life story and then just being stared at. And he's like, yeah, yeah, no, I get what you're saying. Like, <laughs> I loved that. That was one of my favorite, like, mini bromances on this show. So what are some things you liked and what are some things you didn't like from season four? I think the, I think the who can get laid at that wedding, one of those first episodes after the breakup, I thought, that was one of the first episodes after the breakup, right? It was. It's been a while. I thought that was actually a really clever way of kind of bridging that season three to season four where they're together now they're not together Mm -hmm. and how to kind of bring that group dynamic back in i think that was one of my favorite episodes of season 
four. Season four had a lot of focus on getting laid. The loft it getting laid. Yeah. Led mostly by Schmidt, not surprisingly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Schmidt was still trying to get over Cece. Yes. Mm. Uh, Schmidt and Cece. What do we think about, we've mentioned Nick and Jess, what do we think about, now we're going to get to season five, so leave that aside for a second. What do we think about their on again, off again? That, well, it got a little stale. Yeah. I feel like we were just, we kept, you know, they kept us on the hamster wheel going around and around and around and... So I was getting a little tired of it in season four. I wanted them to just either be together and stay together or break up and not be together. I agree with that. I also, like, I felt like once Cece started saying that she had a crush on him, then I was like, okay. Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. Now I'm more interested again. Like, Mm -hmm. when it was just him liking her and then trying to get over her, that was kind of old and obnoxious after a little bit, Mm -hmm. I think. Who's the most compelling couple to you, Nick and Jess or Cece and Schmidt? Cece and Schmidt. Why? Because I like who Schmidt is when he's with Cece. Mm. I feel like that's when we see a lot more of his character development and his character, you know, his evolution, for lack of a better term. And I just, I like the two of them together. I like how crazy Cece got when, you know, over Schmidt. Like, when Mm -hmm. she realized she had a crush on him and he was trying to date, you know, his boss or that political woman. City council woman. City council woman. Yeah. Fawn. Fawn. Yeah. I I I I like like what they bring out in each other and... Yeah, I don't want to talk too much about season five, but I just seeing their relationship in season five was a high point for me. That's what that's what kept me watching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of agreement. I don't. Well, I just. I don't know. I just watch the show because it's funny, and I don't form many strong opinions about it because it's not it's, like the Vampire Diaries with Damon. <laughs> no, I mean I am in love with Zoe, but in a, a different way. So. <laughs> I don't know. I guess neither one are really more compelling than the other to me because, again, I'm just like, just be friends. <laughs> it's yeah. funnier when you're just friends. Yeah. Although there are some cute things that come from mm-hmm. them pairing. But I do agree with Kristen that I like who CC and or Schmidt become when they're together. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I that is why I said I agree. Okay. <laughs> I actually agree with that. I like the CC Schmidt pairing. Maybe a little bit more than the Nick Jess pairing. I get the Nick Jess pairing, and I think mm-hmm. that Jess makes Nick better, but I never understand how Nick helps Jess. I always feel like Jess can do a little better than Nick. I do feel like he like tones her down. Yeah, so he bit. grounds her a little bit, but she's hard to keep down though. She's such she's just floating on a cloud. She yeah. is. She's yeah. la 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 all the time. <laughs> yeah. And I do feel like maybe there are other characters they could introduce later that would have that same grounding effect, but would mm-hmm. make more sense. Yes. Yeah, it's like I really like when she was paired up with the British guy. Was it Ryan? Uh, Ryan. I Which really, was season four. I really, <laughs> I, I really liked them together. And I did too. And it's not just that he's Prince Philip and Once Upon a Time in his off season. It's <laughs> I really liked the two of them together. I thought they were perfectly matched. I thought I liked them way better than I do Nick and Jess. Yeah, I know. I don't understand why he. I mean, I remember that he left because he got, he the got a position job at England. his former school. Yeah, mm-hmm. but. Why did he have to leave? Why did he have to go? Because it was so much fun. Because they couldn't move Jess to England and still have the show be what it is. Well, well why did he have to move to England? <laughs> because apparently Nick and Jess are the long game. Yeah. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I hope not. Any other fun or things you didn't like from season four? I really didn't like Schmidt with Fawn. I, th- I thought Fawn was annoying. Yeah. I mean, I know she was supposed to be, but yeah. I just... It was like watching Schmidt date Schmidt. Yes. I was just going to say that. Yeah. Yeah. It was just kind of like, okay, we've seen this. Let's move on. Mm-hmm. I thought that was kind of boring. It did take an incredibly long time to resolve, as I recall. <sighs> yeah. And it was like Schmidt dating Schmidt who doesn't have any character development. Yeah. Like, at least when, it's when we see Schmidt, we yeah. also see, like, redeeming qualities about yeah. him. And it was like Schmidt dating Schmidt 1.0. Yeah, it yeah. It just, they would have filled their douchebag jar very, very quickly if they were <laughs> to stay together. So, one of the major developments that came out of season four was that Coach, who started off in the pilot, leaves for three se- or two seasons, full seasons, comes back halfway through the third season... Stays through the end of the fourth season and leaves again. How do we feel about Ugh. the in and out of Coach? And how do we feel about Coach? I really like Coach. I really liked him in the pilot. I was 
a little ticked when he when his season when his series for ABC got picked up. I think it was Happy Endings. Happy Endings. But I understand. It's like, yeah, okay, I get it. ABC's a little better paying than Fox, probably. <laughs> I understand the move. Well, but he having, could have negotiated a better salary with his agent. He could have. <laughs> But, I mean, having watched a little bit of Happy Endings, New Girl is way better. And his character was way better on New Girl, so I don't understand why he left. I'm really happy that he came back, and I'm happy that the producers and the writers are willing to work him in whenever he got a free minute. You know, especially once his show got canceled at ABC. He's like, hey, can I come back? We're like, oh, yeah, sure, come on back. We can write you back in really easily. Yeah. And I, I liked that they kept him in, and they gave him a good storyline and good development and... Then all of a sudden now he's on another show that's gotten picked up apparently, so he's gone. I don't know. Shrug. I just, I just, yeah. I wish he'd stick around more permanent. I mean, I like that he still comes back when he can, but I really, I really miss him. I love Winston. Don't get me wrong. Winston is probably my favorite character, period, on the show. But I, I really miss Coach. I, I enjoy Coach. I feel like. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like him, like, going off to do other shows just kind of fits with his character. <laughs> I didn't think about it. Like, like he's other shows. Other shows. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's always kind of fun for me when I'm like, oh, Coach is in this episode. That's fun. And mm-hmm. so, in a way, like, I don't mind it as much. I like Coach. I do think, and we'll sort of segue into season five, but I, I feel like there is an absence on the show when he's not around just because he probably adds, and I'm going to say it like this, a bit of a masculine energy <laughs> <laughs> that the other three guys do not provide. I don't feel like Nick is masculine. <laughs> he would be the next level. He would be like a step down, but... To say, I mean, he's not, he's, he has trouble sort of taking on that persona, I think. He's not ambiguous like Schmidt, and he's not Winston, whatever Winston is, but I think that Coach is very sure of who he is and doesn't give a crap and walks in, and he's kind of, he was sort of big brothering Winston for a while because yeah. he's so good with the female equivalent, and Winston is not at all ever (laughs) so I felt like that was really fun I felt like he also checked Nick a lot whenever Nick was going grumpy Mm -hmm. and he didn't get along with Schmidt hardly at all so that was really funny just by itself (laughs) (laughs) and he had a special relationship with Jess but Jess also got him his job at the school for a while and I slept with everybody and he slept with everybody and then randomly met this May person which I felt like Okay, they weren't together very long, and all of a sudden he's, I guess he found the one, but it just seemed weird yeah, to me, it the way quick. it happened, yeah. quick. So, it's a sitcom, I guess I'd buy it, but at the same time I was just like, okay, they're finding a way to get rid of him. That's how I felt <laughs> Yeah, when I saw it, so. Anything else about season four, or would you like to transition to season five. Now, season five, which is the most recent season that aired this past winter spring, was the pre Schmidt and Cece getting married era. So we're down a coach, but the entire season revolved around pre wedding plans mm-hmm. and some other things that happened. What did you think of season five? It was weird that A, they delayed the premiere to accommodate Zoe's maternity leave. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Let's talk about that. (laughs) But it was weird because of the fact that she still wasn't in it for like a month of episodes. And so it was just very... So what was the point of delaying it if she still wasn't going to be in it anyway? And it's New Girl. You can't have New Girl without Jess. She is the New Girl! She is the New Girl. That was really weird. I mean, I get the jury duty storyline, but... Why? I mean, when she's the main character, you just need to kind of stop production, wait, or film other scenes without her, and then come back and fill her in to make the episodes complete. I felt having Megan Fox fill in as Reagan for a month <laughs> was awful. I, I don't like Megan Fox. But that's just me. I don't either. And I just, poor choice and poor storytelling with that. Like, it was a weird device. Although I... I don't like Megan Fox, but I liked her the most I've ever liked her in this. I didn't love her. Definitely I didn't feel like she was a good replacement for the the void that is left when Jess is gone. Right. But I was like, okay, I don't absolutely hate her in this. 
But like I said, I didn't love her either. It was fun to watch all the, the wedding planning stuff. I liked that. I thought that the jury duty storyline was really creative. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was That's a creative okay. way to, to do it, but I still wish they wouldn't have had her absent for a good chunk of it. Yeah. yeah, I have to agree with that. I also don't like Megan Fox ever. Never. All the time. <laughs> she's not funny. I guess I can buy your opinion, Kelsey, that she was the best she's ever been in New Girl, but that's I'm, still not saying I was going to say, I am not need to say anything <laughs> The by bar that, is like. low. <laughs> they basically just brought her on, I think, because she's quote-unquote hot, empirically very attractive, I guess, and that was an element they could insert into a loft full of guys, basically. And she's got the celebrity status, she I think, does. to like turn people's heads and be like, wait, Megan Fox is on New Girl? Like, maybe yeah. they were hoping like they could... Like, casting, like, yeah. to get some ratings. Yeah, I think maybe that was part of it. Which I get that, too. But then they tried to pair her off with Nick. Yeah. And Reagan, to me... So, even if you ignore that she's Megan Fox and just think of the character Reagan, she seems like this very together, like, career-minded, everything-is-in-its-place kind of person. Mm-hmm. And Nick is the... Opposite of that, <laughs> antithesis of that, and while I get that opposites attract, their chemistry was weird, and I just was like, okay. I kind of felt like she was just bored, so she's like, yeah, I'll yeah, basically, like almost like what Lori did with Kelso on that '70s show. Yeah, like, I'm bored. I need someone to play with, and apparently the relationship she had with the one girl played by Clea Duvall didn't work out. No development there either. Mm-hmm. Like, I would have liked to know more about, I guess, that relationship and why it all of a sudden blew up. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I don't know. I, I didn't love Reagan. I thought, I agree that the, while the jury duty storyline in and of itself was a clever device, and they still checked in with her, like she... She was, held up the sign, like, I can yeah, fix it, but it's From like, her sequestered okay. hotel room. It's like, that's clearly a body double, but good job. <laughs> You know. She did all right. She, she did, did all right. right. I, I agree that they probably should have just either not had some other woman come in or just taken some time some off. Some time off. And mm-hmm. maybe start later in the season. They start other shows later. in like March, so it yeah. would have made sense mm-hmm. to me if they had done that. Yeah. But the one thing that I did like out of it is the Winston CC relationship really had a chance to grow. Like they actually kind of made a point of saying, you know, like we never hang out. Mm-hmm. And I like how Winston kind of became her surrogate maid of honor, and <laughs> yeah. I thought that was that was that was clever. Bridesmaid and groomsman. Yeah, he had both. That roles. was clever. <laughs> that was cute. How did you like Jess as maid of honor and Nick as the best man? For cliche, but yeah. understandable. I mean, it made sense. Yeah, yeah. it made sense, but it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't find really the there's very few of the pre wedding things that. I thought to be novel or full of laughs. I mean, New Girl guarantees at least some laughs for me every time I watch it. Yeah. But the wedding stuff was just like, okay, whatever. I don't care about that (laughs) so much. Especially when it came down to, like, you know, the the 80s wedding dress and stuff. Until the Bachelor, Bachelorette shenanigans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That stuff was hilarious. I don't know what you guys thought about it. You know, bachelor shenanigans, they try to go to Vegas, they end up in this bar fight. (laughs) I loved watching Nick and Schmidt riding those four wheelers. Yeah, (laughs) that was very funny. And in the bachelorette situation, of course, we had high Jess with high CC. She got marijuana for this. And that led to beating a bread maker and going to the store to replace the bread maker (laughs) and stealing the bread maker. What did we think about that? I just, I don't know. I liked the bachelor party way better than the bachelorette party. That was just me. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. I would agree, actually. I'm I'm just agreeable. I'm like, yes. It makes sense. (laughs) Everything you guys say. Great. Yes. Okay. I'm just. Um, (laughs) It's just. Yeah, no, I definitely left at the bachelor party more. I mean, I think High Jess was funny, but I don't know. Like, all they did was go to the store and steal a bread maker. <laughs> yeah, like, it, it's like, you guys, they could have done something a little more creative with the High Jess storyline. Yeah, they I think so too. They could have. I mean, I feel like they wasted their creative energy on the bachelor party, which is 
kind of funny because you wouldn't put it past those guys to do something like that anyway on the bachelor party. Yeah, it was kind of like a mini episode of New Girls Take on the Hangover. Like, I could see it that. was, which I liked. <laughs> that was funny. But then they should have done like I don't know, mini bridesmaids or something. For yeah, just, or something more original and creative. But you know, like, yeah, but something along their adventure needed to be just as good, just as epic. No, yeah, I, I like felt that. like it wasn't. That's yeah. true. Yeah. yeah, and Winston could have come back and been a bridesmaid with them because he was already doing that. Yeah. yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, yeah. I think that would have been funny. So what else did we think about this season? We met Schmidt's dad. I really like Schmidt's dad. And Jess made out with him. <laughs> <laughs> Creepy. <laughs> but, I mean, who wouldn't? I mean, to be fair, she didn't know he was his dad at the time. Very true. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. You have a lot of thoughts about that, I see. Well, well I'm trying to remember. Well, I mean, he owns a, a oh, vineyard. Yeah. The Peter vineyard. Gallagher. He owns a yeah. vineyard. And it's Peter Gallagher. Like, come on. His name is Gavin. <laughs> Gavin Schmidt. I'm just saying. So if he's Gavin Schmidt, we can only imagine what Schmidt's first name really is. We hope it's like Francois. <laughs> That's what I, wanted I want it to be just something like really... Or like, like Herbert. Yeah. And Herbert. there has to be like really like old school vintage, like old man name. Or like what Kelsey was saying, like it has to be something really exotic and totally from left field. Or maybe yeah. especially Jewish. I mean, he's Jewish. That's what, yeah, I was thinking true. Jewish as well. Like Shlomo or something. Shlomo Shlomo is that a Jewish name? It is. Okay. Yeah. Shlomo Schmidt. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Do you know, I mean, this is like a tangent, but what is the, the actor's name who plays Nick Miller? Jake Jensen. No. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it is. But like when my husband, Michael, told me that was his name, I was like, that's not his name. That's not oh. a real name. <laughs> Would you name somebody? <laughs> like, well, apparently. And then I just decided, uh, no, he's just Jake. <laughs> I had to look it up on IMDb because I didn't believe him. Yeah. I was like, that's, that's not a... What? It's just true. It's true. Well... So anyway, just, just speaking of names. <laughs> he can't help it. Well, maybe it's a stage name. I don't know. I don't we'll know. I mean, it. It, I, I have nothing against it. It just, <laughs> it just doesn't seem like it fits him. Like, when oh. I look at him, I'm like... His Jake face Johnson. doesn't scream Jake Johnson. No, but I think I'm just so used to Nick Miller that I'm like... I know, it's hard to think that they actually have real names most and of like, the time. Also, when I hear Jake Johnson, I think of Jack Johnson, and then I start singing oh. Banana Pancakes in my head, oh. and I don't see him fitting that song at all. So yeah, like, that, like, that's no. a problem. I'm like, no. He probably likes this to is, eat banana pancakes. This is my logic. This is yeah. a free association I can't follow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Nick. What do you want? <laughs> anyways, anyways. I also, just backtracking a little bit, I really liked the episode where she was dating the boring guy because his parents were cool. Oh, yes. Oh, One of hilarious. which was played by the Fonz. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. That oh, episode was Henry funny. Winkler. Yeah. That was funny. Really and funny. wasn't Winston trying to tag onto that, too? He was, yeah. yeah. Okay. He was trying to be part that. of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it just felt like something that I would have done when I was single, <laughs> and it made me laugh. <laughs> more than a fair share of people have dated somebody just because they really liked their parents or their extended family in general. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, for sure. It happens. What about Winston's blossoming romance with his partner, Allie? I like that. It's cute. I really like it. it was... I think, actually, that's my favorite couple. In okay. In season five, that was my favorite yeah. couple. Season yeah. four was Schmidt and Cece. Five is Winston and Allie. That's okay. really cute. And I like that it wasn't, like, I guess 100% obvious and we didn't I mean, we, I guess we saw it coming, but it like I like that she gave him a hard time about it initially. It wasn't ham fisted the way it happened. Exactly. It was more organic. Exactly. I liked that. Me too. And I feel like they're both equally awkward, and it's cute. Yeah, it and is. that's what makes it so cute is that they're kind of on the same playing field. They're just so adorable. I just kind of want to like I want a show of just Winston and Allie. I'm not gonna lie, I would watch that spinoff. <laughs> <laughs> I totally would. I'm just happy Winston is. Finding someone I, who's I, not Ferguson, who's not Ferguson, <laughs> or the old late neighbor lady, or something like yeah. that. I mean, Winston has really had a rough go of it, and what? I like the fact that Allie sort of schools him in his awkwardness. Yeah. What season was it where we discovered that Winston has cat dishes in his room with everybody's names on them? I don't know. Oh, but I, I do completely forgot that. about that. Oh my <laughs> gosh! I just remembered that, and it, it was hilarious. <laughs> 
That has to be season like two or three. Was it that far back? I think I so. I don't more recent. I don't remember it in season four, but it's it been in it's four. been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. I could have sworn it was like more recent, but yeah, that was oh hilarious. my gosh. It's another reason I love Winston. He's just he's just he's nuts. <laughs> he's almost as crazy as Jess. Almost, almost in like a different way. Yeah, I I think they're evenly crazy, but differently crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I think. Was it season? It was season four, I think, and I forgot to mention that I loved this. But the the episode where he is trying to become a cop and Jess thinks she has meth. And yes, like, oh my <laughs> that that is probably one of my top episodes from that season. Yeah, yeah, me too. And it wasn't meth. It was just you know, whatever. Yeah, what was it? I can't remember. Like. Feel like silica gel or something like that, something yeah. packing material or something. It wasn't meth, and it was hilarious. I just love that she just down. like thought she had it and just kept it because she didn't know how to get rid of it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> She's just that crazy. We love her. We love oh, her. It's Jess. It's Jess. What about the return of Doctor Sam? So Doctor Sam was played by David Walton, who went away. Did about a boy that got canceled? He came back. <laughs> That's kind of a theme with this show. Go do other things. You, you almost come back when it's canceled. Yeah, right. Apparently, what do the we producers think about that? are just like really lenient. Yeah, <laughs> and new girl. They're all really chill. Yeah, it started off with the restraining order. I definitely enjoyed the whole. I, restraining I enjoyed. Order. It. I really, <laughs> and I really, liked really the related to order. it and felt like that's exactly something that would happen to me. Like, <laughs> I'm really, I'm really like, not starting. You're trying to, to apologize, like, and it, it just backfires in every possible yeah, way. Yeah. I love it. that was very creative, and I really, really liked that storytelling device. Mm-hmm. I did too. Like when she's like in the back of his truck and she's stuck. And she <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Oh, I felt yes. kind of bad. Like when she brought the brownies and he just like put his hands into the brownies and just like crumbled them all up. And I'm sitting there thinking, those are perfectly good brownies. Like, what's your problem? At least take them and eat them and then give her the pan back. But I like brownies. That's well, then I, I feel too, like yeah. they worked so hard, or she worked so hard, and sort of convinced him, and they had this relationship. And then this best friend randomly comes in. Dr. Sam's best friend Diane, who has the letter that never made it to Sam. Sam. And then the letter all of a sudden came back out of the woodwork and yeah. Jess actually encouraged this. Right. And but then he's like, you oh, know, I've read the letter, like we're like that time has passed and no, I want to be with you, Jess. And then, um, so I know it's like the morning of your friend's wedding, but I'm gonna go with my best friend now and be with her. And break up with you because <sighs> You love Nick. I feel like these are the things that make me hate guys. <laughs> yeah. like, because guys would do that. Yeah. And I'm like, why? Why are you so cliche? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because they're taking the guaranteed thing over a possibility. Mm-hmm. Even though he had a really good relationship with Jess. and Which you know, maybe women do that too. I maybe. Know. And I don't know. I just... It was, a, again, it was a device to bring Jess and Nick back together. That's mm-hmm. what the whole thing with Sam was. Which is... Silly? Yeah. That's a thumbs, thumbs down. down. <laughs> That's what that sound effect is. Yeah. Thumbs down. That's right. The listeners cannot see the thumbs down. <laughs> but they can hear it. So you don't want Nick and Jess to get back together. Uh, I'm on the fence. Because I think that's where we're headed. It is where we're I, I think that's the end game. I think yeah. I would be okay with that as long as it was fresh. Like if there was something new that came out of it other than... Just the basic, same old Nick and Jess chemistry. Like, if they were able to evolve their relationship a little bit, I would be okay with that. But again, like, why? Yeah, and they... Can we just all be friends? I know. And they keep suggesting that at least... Now, Nick, I guess, sort of has feelings for Reagan, but maybe... And I don't know if they're planning on bringing Megan Fox in for any extended period of time. I hope not. I know, me Please either. Don't. I don't want a love triangle. I think that's no, I think over. Really you know what they should do? They should do like in Mean Girls where she just like walks into the road and gets hit by a bus. <laughs> That'd be oh, great. That's Boy. brilliant. <laughs> Send that to the producers right now. If you're listening. <laughs> no more Reagan. Yeah, yeah. I, I I don't I'm not a fan. I'm or sorry. like she should get a job in London. Move. Maybe not London because I don't want her to hook up with the British guy. No, I was just like, saying the same thing. No, Africa, like, or even just go, have her go to like, like New York, 
or just yeah. somewhere somewhere far somewhere away. Far away. Nick doesn't have the the passion to do a long distance relationship. No. no, so he doesn't have the passion to like move from the loft. So <laughs> it's not going to happen. Yeah, so it's perfect <laughs> that we want him to date a roommate. Yes, so. but at the same time, I feel like yeah. I don't want it to be too convenient either. I, I agree with Kelsey. If they don't do something new, I'm going to probably find this show a little less interesting as the seasons yeah. progress. Yeah. Because we've been down this and as you mentioned you're sort of comparing them to Ross and Rachel. You know, the the to bring it full circle and compare it to friends again, I thought the more compelling relationship was Monica and Chandler because mm-hmm. they actually kept going. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas Ross and Rachel, I know that they were shipped for forever and a day all the way up until the last episode, but I just got really tired of Ross and Rachel yep. and hearing about too. Ross and Rachel. Having the baby was sort of fun just because it added something interesting. Right. But otherwise, we were on a break. We were not on a break. That's kind of what Nick and Jess feel like a little yeah. bit right now yeah. without actually saying it. Mm-hmm. So I just hope that they, yeah, do something new if they're going to go back down that road. I, I guess I just rambled there. <laughs> <laughs> and I've stunned you into silence. You have. Okay. We've said all there is to say. We have. Anything else about season five that you liked or you didn't like? Reagan didn't like. <laughs> Anything else, Kristen? <laughs> Reagan and Nick's relationship. Anything else, Kristen? <laughs> Nick's feelings for Reagan. <laughs> All right. I can't um, emphasize I, this I did, enough. Like, even though I'm on the why can't we just be friends board, I liked Jess's like random sex dream about Nick. Oh, that the was Chicago Bears with the, helmet. With the helmet. That was pretty funny. That was a really funny episode. Then she has it like on her head and she can't get it off. Well, she's yeah. trying to go meet Dr. Sam's parents. parents. <laughs> oh, that was that was fun. It was, was fun. fun. The one thing that was really sweet about the wedding and that was really funny about the wedding is when Schmidt flew to go to get, get to mom. get Cece's mom yeah. and got stuck and they he was like skyped in for the ceremony and the reception and like leaving the conga line yeah. in the tablet and then also doing it in the plane. I thought that was that was delightful. But then they had that sweet, very private wedding they in the did, loft. Which was super And her mother cute. was there. Her mother yeah. did not like Schmidt, resisted it all the way up until the end. Although I don't really know what convinced her because she was already there when he went to go mm-hmm. try to fly um, I think off. she gave a little mini spe- uh, speech about it, just about how much he's trying he's doing to make her happy and if this oh, is he what, called her every he day. called her every day That's and was right. leaving her voicemails and was like if this is the kind of dedication that he has just to try to get my blessing mm-hmm. you know it's like i know he's gonna make you happy and this is the right thing for you yeah, yeah. and okay. that was sweet like this have her like playing the voicemails the few that we heard i just thought that was it was cute even though i'm kind of a jess and nick person in real life i find that my favorite character is more often than not schmidt just because he makes me laugh the most. He does. I love how he gets into his little speeches, and mm-hmm. it's always with this emphasis. And, oh, my goodness. You know? And he has the the office in the bathroom yes. at one point. <laughs> just, because as he's the only man at his workplace, so yeah. no one else comes in there. Yeah. At least until his boss, his power boss, yeah. figures it out. Just so he can plan for the wedding. Yeah. So how do you think the show overall is holding up in general? And what do you hope to see in season six, if anything? What questions do you have going forward? Will they or won't they? Make a decision. Stick with it. Let's move on. They can just, you mean? Yes. Yeah. They can just. Yeah, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. i kind of like to see Schmidt and CC maybe get pregnant and see Schmidt going into full out, like, new father mode. That'd be I hilarious. I think that would be really funny because if he was that excessive about the wedding yeah i can only and i can just see like the little like the outfits that schmidt would be buying the baby <laughs> yeah and i just think that would be maybe not in this upcoming season that might be too quick but i think it would be maybe if they do get a season seven that would be yeah worthwhile or if they were going to now of course this would sort of be digging from the friends template but if Nick and Jess were to randomly hook up in a moment of weakness and she gets pregnant that would be interesting because Nick was already approached about giving his sperm to his cousins, Mm -hmm. so it would be interesting to see if he'd be willing to go that far 
when actually confronted with the possibility that the baby would be his to take care of. Right. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like that would be almost too much of a stretch for Nick. I don't know. I feel like that would be the end of the show. Yeah, like, I think it, it would, would be. I feel like it would, I don't know that it would work as well as it did yeah. with, like, Ross and Rachel. Yeah, like, it could work for Schmidt and Cece. It could even work for Winston and Allie. I could even see Coach and May, mm-hmm. maybe. But Nick and Jess are, like, the last couple on my list that I'd want to <laughs> happen to, at least right now. Don't reproduce yet. Don't reproduce yet. They're both, they both got some growing to do before I think they're ready for yeah. a planned event, at least. Yeah. But Do you think the show is still as funny as it was when it started? I don't think so. I don't I think either. it's... I think it's lost a little bit of its magic because it's not new anymore. And I think when they redid the titles and they got away from the actual theme song and they were just using, mm-hmm. like, the melody, I feel like it, they just tried to take it in a different direction and yeah. appeal and, well, to a broader audience. I feel audience. like with this last season, with Schmidt and Cece getting married, Schmidt got a lot more serious, and he was the one who usually had all the one-liners Yeah, like, the comic relief. And, yes. Like, I could do nothing but scroll through, like, Schmidt memes all day because they make me laugh. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel yeah. like there weren't as many from this no, last there season. No, there were not. I was just thinking, like, going back if Nick and Jess had a pregnancy scare that, that would be compelling that would like, be kind I of funny too could maybe watch that yeah and that could be funny but it would, I would be legitimately concerned for the child if they actually had a baby <laughs> yes like, just I don't think they're ready for that no. either one of them no so but yeah I um, think I think you're onto something I think your pregnancy scare would be kind of funny yeah because they could do it in a very funny light-hearted way yeah yeah and I think that would be really relatable as well mm-hmm. to like a lot of people in our in the millennial yeah. group. <laughs> More relatable than oh my gosh, I'm actually pregnant. So I think yeah. it'd be really funny. I th- I think it's st- I think it's still funny. I just think they need to make Schmidt more funny again. Yeah, yeah. Like they kind of left the comic relief to Winston a little bit, mm-hmm. which is okay. But he's just a little crazy. Yeah, and they need to they need like, to crazy yet more. one note. Like his craziness has a very specific. Yeah, yeah. Bend to it, right? That never changes. And We're, Schmidt's humor was a little more universal and a little more unpredictable. Yeah, mm-hmm. like you never quite knew what he was going to say or how he was going to react to Which something. I think that's why I like Schmidt so much. Yeah, he's just kind of that wild card. Yeah, that's why I like him. I mean, you can always count on Nick to be grumpy. I kind of like the Nick and Schmidt. Mm-hmm. Friendship, their best friendship that's gone back for since they were kids. Right. Because that is it. Schmidt's got all the one liners and Nick's got the sarcastic reply mm-hmm. to the one one liners or the Schmidt, like calm down you know, yeah. kind of reaction. I kind of like them more. I I like Winston. I think he's a very sweet character, but like Kelsey said, he's very crazy and yeah. crazy to the point that he never actually changes his craziness. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. kind of hard to find him funny. Like sometimes the thing, the Winston things he does makes you say, "Oh, there goes Winston again." Right. Yeah. But it's, it's not, not so funny. much laugh out loud. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what's kind of interesting is as quirky. As Jess is, she's kind of the straight character in the show. She and is. I just realized that. Character. Like I was like, yeah, but Jess is funny, and then I was like, but not like she's the straight man to the jokes. She really is. Yeah. Like, and sometimes Cece plays that role because I don't think she's sure. as funny. Yeah, no. she initially started as that when the show first began, but mm-hmm. she's kind of evolved to have her own little quirks now too. Yeah. yeah, which I think is a product of being with Schmidt. I don't know. I. I I still think the show is funny. Like, I still want to watch it. It's not a priority show. Mm -hmm. That's probably why we're talking about seasons four and five right now. (laughs) (laughs) But it's still the kind of show that once I've decided to binge watch the season, I will watch it and watch it all the way through. Mm -hmm. It makes me laugh. It's cute. It's got Mm -hmm. the characters that are reliable in some ways. I just hope that they don't get stale. And that's... What I'm kind of feeling is starting to happen a little bit, at least after season five. Because, as the article pointed out that I alluded to earlier, I I think they are slow to evolve, (laughs) these two characters. And if Mm -hmm. they don't do some kind of major evolving, I think Schmidt and Cece will see more now that they're married. For sure. I'm interested to see how 
their dynamic changes with the rest of their friends who are single. Mm-hmm. Having mm-hmm. gone through that experience oh, of yes. like yeah. getting married and all my friends being single still, I'm interested to see what they do with that. <laughs> I don't mean it. As, <laughs> I don't mean it as a criticism. I just mean like it's an interesting thing to go through. And then even more so, like if they were to have a kid, how how, how that, that would, would affect. Change. I don't see that they could stay in the loft with the kid. Oh, definitely. That would be like... Are they... No, they're they're down the hall. I was going to say, are they even staying in the loft now that they're married? Because that'd be kind of weird. They are moving? Well, I thought, doesn't Schmidt have his own apartment, or is that Winston's now? I have lost track of that. Somebody has the apartment Somebody does have that other apartment. I can't remember. It was Schmidt. Schmidt. It was Schmidt at one point, so I don't know if it's still his. Maybe Winston will trade him. (laughs) If, If it is Winston. I don't yeah, think I don't Winston know. can. I don't think he can survive in the wild. No, he can't. <laughs> so, and he just, needs to have yeah. a consistent place oh for Ferguson. God. What yeah. season was it where Winston was playing the long game with those two girls? Three, I think. Was it? Or yeah. four. Three or Man, four. I must have, like, really been. It was because four it because like... Coach was checking him on it. Okay. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, and then they, funny. then coach kind of joined in on it, and then ruined it. They all mm-hmm. ruined it. It exploded. It exploded. Yeah, the I will say. Speaking on. of coach and Winston, the one thing I am glad is that when they did have to replace coach, they didn't just replace the actor; they actually replaced the character, mm-hmm. which left the door open for coach to come back. Because a lot of shows, like, I mean, if if a character can't make it past the pilot. They usually reshoot. Recast. They reshoot and recast. Yeah, and so I like it that they just. You know, explained, oh, nope, he's gone, and now here's Winston instead. Yeah. yeah. I also like that all the characters have a history but for Jess. Oh, with Jess and Cece have their own history, mm-hmm. and the boys have their own have history. Have their own history. Mm-hmm. I, speaking of, I'd love to see more Schmidt and Nick history like in their college days. I think yeah. fat kid Schmidt is delightful and, and we and visit Nick, him at Nick least with a few like, times yeah season. and like Nick with like the long hair and like the tie-dye and I, I, that's a good combo I was just thinking like another similarity between friends is just how and they're different characters but about how Monica and Rachel had their history as well and mm-hmm. the other guys all had their own things so that I'm I'm coming to the dark side. Kind of. <laughs> I Why is it the dark side? I was going to say, maybe dark is the wrong word. <laughs> I don't know. Jeez. I was trying to make a pop culture reference. Oh, okay. It failed. It failed. But yeah, no, I'm starting to, I'm starting to see more connections in your theory. <laughs> okay. See? There we go. Woohoo! <laughs> Success. How does New Girl compare to other TV shows to you? In or sitcom. other sitcoms? I mean, as far as sitcoms go, I think it's the one of the most well written that's that I I'm trying to think of other sitcoms that I watch like my that aren't old. like my favorite like modern sitcom that's on right now is the big bang theory and I've been watching that yeah. since the beginning and they've made big character developments they've that's had true. they've had characters get married you know some are spoiler one of the couples is pregnant it's like they're getting there and they're on season 9 or 10 I think going into this yeah. fall so i mean they have just as long as longevity as friends does and it's a very similar concept and I don't know, I, Big Bang Theory is one that I have to watch live or I have to watch it the next day. And like I said, New Girl, I can let it stack up on my DVR and I can be doing other things while I'm watching it. Yeah, I don't know. I fell off the Big Bang Theory wagon. I haven't watched it in a long time. So, I don't know. I'm trying to think of, like, other... I mean, I guess, like, Modern Family... But even that has kind of lost its sparkle but even, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, like, I haven't kept up with that one. I can only think of three that I watch, including New Girl. One is The Mindy Project, which I followed to Hulu. I just watched an episode of that today. That yeah. was really funny. I yeah. haven't seen I still more think of it. Mindy Kaling is hilarious. I've read both her books. I love her. I yeah. love her books. I've not watched The Mindy Project yet. It's I recommend list. it. It's on Hulu now. All of the seasons are on Hulu now because Fox canceled it, but Hulu picked it up. Mm-hmm. As original programming, and so they also swear more on this to come. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but of the ones that are on right now, because this does not count sitcoms from all time, that's a whole, right. other, mm-hmm. a whole other discussion. I think that one, Mindy Project, and I also watch Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. That's yeah, right. Nice. I think that Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt's probably the freshest and the funniest. But it's also only on, like, season two, isn't it? Yeah, so it's, it's only on it's season still, two. I mean, New Girl in season two was still really good. Yeah. Yeah. I think New Girl keeps it relevant mm-hmm. to... I, I like that 
This is technically sort of kind of my age group because I'm in the weird five years that's between Gen X, Gen Y. They're trying to think of a new title for that. <laughs> <laughs> so I relate to these characters. I I mean, even though I see my see Jess and me, I'm honestly probably way more Nick now that we talk about it. <laughs> so I totally relate to his sense of, you know, I don't know what I want to do with my life. I'm kind of kicking it over here and making things happen <laughs> in their own time <laughs> with his opinions. So I relate to them, I think, a little bit more. And I haven't, I've watched The Big Bang Theory, but I haven't ironically gotten into it. I think I have to, like, sit and just watch it from the beginning. You do. Because I know they're all nerds, and I should actually like that. (laughs) Yeah. I just, I felt like they're all nerds, but, like, I'm a nerd, and I'm like, you're not quite, like, they're, like... They're nerds in a different... They're nerds, like... They're science nerds. There's a difference. Well, they're science nerds, and then, like, when they get pop culture nerdy, there's, like, flaws in their nerdness. Nerdiness? Mm -hmm. I don't know. And I'm like, no, a real fan of that would never say that. (laughs) (laughs) That bothers me. Which is why I stopped watching... One of the reasons why I stopped watching See, I probably do the same thing. Yeah. But But I do... I mean, I did enjoy the characters on it. I think the... I guess... I guess it's a sitcom. The other show that I watched that I enjoyed as much as New Girl, other than Kimmy Schmidt, which I think is hilarious, Mm -hmm. was 30 Rock. Yes. As far as, like, I know, I know, but as far as, like, writing goes... 30 Rock's one of my favorites of all time. Yeah. Yeah. 30 Rock took me a while to get into. I started watching on Netflix. Really? I had to take a break, and then I went back and I started over, and that's when I really started to like it a lot more. The first half of the first season's a little bumpy, but once you get past that, it's funny. I felt like that pilot was solid Uh, of that show. The pilots usually are. And I really liked the pilot of Thirty Rock. Yeah. And but then after like that, she buys all the hot dogs. Yeah. I was like, yes. Tina Fey is my celebrity BFF, and I am probably Liz Lemon, except with the cool job. I don't have that. <laughs> I feel like I'm a combination of Liz Lemon and Jessica Day, but like married with a child. Okay. But like if. If that, so you're Liz Lemon at the end of Thirty Rock. Spoiler, <laughs> spoiler alert. Yeah, my husband has picked lettuce out of my hair multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> Do you Say work on your lot. night cheese? Mm. Do I what? Work on your night cheese. Not, not so much. I do. You <laughs> love I, I love cheese. I do love cheese. Do the other day I went snuggie? to... Hmm? Um, you wear a Snuggie? I do not have I a do. Snuggie. I do. Y'all are it's a Mickey Mouse this. Snuggie. <laughs> it's the only way to have a Snuggie. So if we combined your Snuggie and your cheese, we'd have it. I mean, I did go... <laughs> yeah. I went to this this pizza place near us. That is, It's kind of like Subway for pizza. And they were like, what cheese would you like on this? And I was like, all of it. <laughs> all the cheeses. All the cheeses, please. <laughs> It was amazing. They had like six cheeses. I was like, yes. I think she's hungry. Let's bring it back. <laughs> you said cheese. I know. Yeah. It's my fault. Anything else you want to say about New Girls seasons four or five, or what you like, what you didn't, what you hope for season six, or as compared to other sitcoms? Now I really want the pregnancy scare. <laughs> I'm yes. on board with yeah. this. Okay. I, I'm wondering if season six is going to be its last. I hope not. If they don't make some big character developments, I feel like it's going to get stale, like we'd mentioned before, mm-hmm. and I don't know. I just don't know where it can go from here if they don't make some leaps. I think it's definitely late life, and I think the ratings have definitely dropped comparatively mm-hmm. over the course of the last few seasons, particularly probably the last season. I don't know if season six will be its last. Fox once they do decide to renew <laughs> TV shows, because they're kind of cancel-happy, does tend to stick with the show for a very long time. So I guess it would depend on what they think is going to come in behind it. I do think Zoe Deschanel is ultimately a draw, and they're losing Bones. Bones is ending, and they kind of mm-hmm. said, oh, Zoe's in this show, and Emily's in this show. So without Bones, I don't know if they're going to lose this one. If they can afford one. to lose it. Yeah, but I do think that, I think there's at least a couple more seasons that they're going to get out of it, but I do think it's definitely late life, and it's definitely potentially on the wane. I think the minute they get Jess and Nick back together, it would feel like it was ending. I think so. Unless they can find a way to keep it fresh, fresh. but I think that's why the Ross and Rachel thing took forever to, like, Mm -hmm. get its footing, too, because 
that was what kept people watching. Even though it got weird and stale, people were still like, oh, but wait. Yeah. But um, then they did Chandler and Monica. That's why I kept I, watching. I did love Chandler Yeah, they did Chandler, but then they did Phoebe and Paul Rudd. Mike. Uh, Mike. Yeah. You I know, and so that. they had the other couplings That's true. happen while Ross and Rachel weren't happening, and they right. had them with other people. Mm-hmm. Right. And with this, okay, so we got Schmidt and Cece together in the interim. Winston and Allie are already together. Where? What else are we going to do? And who knows how to play true American? I still don't get it. There, there are rules online. Okay. Some people have gone through and they've actually written them down. I feel like we should have played it while we were doing this podcast. I know, right? Well, who says we weren't? <laughs> Um, we were secretly calling out the next turn. Yeah. <laughs> anything else you want to say about New Girls seasons four or five, or anything of the rest of it? I've already said no Reagan a bunch of times. So I think I'm good. <laughs> yes, no Kristen, your position no is Reagan. crystal clear. Hit by a bus, <laughs> Are you going to keep watching? Yes. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll keep it on my DVR. I probably again I won't watch it live, but I'll I'll keep in touch with it. I think if Two Broke Girls is still on. The new girl should stay on. <laughs> yes! the writing is so much better in New Girl, even though it's getting stale. Yeah, the writing's so much better, and the characters are so much better. And yeah, I'm I'm gonna keep watching. I still find it funny. It's still yeah. good for a few laughs. I don't think it's ready to be ended yet, but we will take the temperature after season six. Would you recommend yeah. it to others? Yes, right yes. Okay. But I would say watch it from episode one. Yeah, yeah I sure. would say that too. There's too many in-jokes where you really can't pick up on it if you don't watch it from the beginning. That's true. There are some very continuous running gags on this show that Mm -hmm. really are only funny if you get the setup. So at this point, then, I'd like to thank Kelsey and Kristen for joining me to talk about New Girl and this five-season quirky, quote-unquote, adorkable sitcom. Because this is, it's a 22-episode season, but obviously it's a sitcom, so this is a once-a-year check-in for us, I think. The next time that you hear from this New Girl panel will most likely be after Season 6 airs. In the meantime, as I said in the introduction, we have several more very brand new episodes coming down the pike, including revisits for a bunch of shows that finaled out in the spring. These two in this room will be on several of them, so just keep listening. Keep subscribing to CouchPotatoesUnite.wordpress.com. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest. Keep abreast of new developments. I've also alluded to the live podcast. Make sure you stay tuned for those announcements because there are going to be some interesting new formats of those live podcasts, and I think it's going to be an all new experiment that should be pretty fun for us as well in the meantime keep listening keep watching stay tuned we have so much more to enjoy and what else are you going to do it's summertime listen to our podcast thank you for listening stay tuned bye